Nmap is a network scanning tool that hackers and penetration testers commonly use to gather intelligence on devices. The way Nmap works is it sends packets to a victim or a host, and dependent on that response, we can see what ports are open, what services are on the device, and what operating system is also running on this one. So we're gonna dive right into Nmap syntax, and then ultimately we're going to actually launch a scan on a victim machine. But the most important thing and the first thing that I do is try to understand the syntax behind a tool. So let's go into that. We're gonna be using Kali Linux as our main operating system in this case, and we're gonna launch Nmap off of Kali Linux as it natively runs on it. But if you don't understand Kali Linux or you don't have a Kali Linux VM or host, it's totally fine. We can run this off of Windows. So the way we do this is we can just go to any search engine, type in Nmap, and usually the second link or third link will take you to download. If not, you can type in download. We go to nmap.org forward slash download. We click on the Windows section. Then if we go a little bit to the top, we can actually see there is an nmap setup going on there. So we can click that folder and we can run the install if we wish. I've already installed it on my operating system, but I do recommend that if you're gonna use it on Windows, you run through this installation as you do need this tool. From this point, we can actually go into our terminal and we can type in the command nmap. So if you don't have a Kali VM, I recommend that you go ahead and do this, install it, and you can run it from here. It's the exact same as the Kali instance. But for those of you that do have Kali, we're gonna open up the VM, and once we're in there, we're gonna navigate to a terminal. And from this point on, we're going to run the following command, nmap space dash h. And you'll see a similarity in many hacking tools. They allow you to run the dash h argument and this argument will give you more data on that tool and will help us understand how to better use it. Another important thing to note is the usage. It's a scan type options, target specifications. It's just this basic syntax that we have to use. It's a simple rule that we have to follow. So for target specification, it's really good to understand that we can scan fully qualified domains. We can scan subnet masks after domains or IP address. And we can also scan multiple IPs and IP ranges as we can see right here. We can also have a prefix list of text file or, or a text file with host defined within it. So we can have multiple IPs in a ip.txt document and then we can use the IL flag to actually scan multiple hosts. So let's move on to host discovery. I don't wanna to go too in depth as this is a beginner course so we're only gonna be going over the most common and the most used uh, arguments in Nmap. This is a list scan, so all this will do is just simply display the targets that we can further enumerate. The next one is SN, which is a ping scan. This doesn't really do operating system scan or port scanning. All this does is, like many know, a ping sweep. It does an inventory enumeration. It just looks for the devices that are, uh, that are up and it reports based on them. The next scan is PN. And this can help us with speed a little bit because it skips that host discovery. It doesn't worry about whether the machine is up or down. It just enumerates based on it anyway. And obviously forwards the data that we do get off of that machine. I do want to go over scan techniques a little bit because they're very important. It's probably the foundation of Nmap. So we have a few. We have the SS, ST argument, SA, SW, and SM. The most common usually being SS, ST. I've seen SU used frequently, and SN as well. But SS is very important because this is a TCP SYN scan. SU being a UDP scan, and SN being a TCP null scan. But in this case, we're gonna be using SS later on in this video. So the next step is port specifications and scan order. This is also very important. So the dash P argument allows us to enumerate ports on a device. For example, if we do the dash P argument, and we append it with a 21 directly after, no spaces, so dash P 21, it will be looking for port 21 FTP being open on a victim machine or the host that we're scanning, of course. Now, if we do dash P dash, then we do a space, that will basically run a scan on all ports enumerable from zero to 600, six, 65,535. We can also do a fast scan and we can do a sequential scan so we tell it to not randomize and 
obviously these type of scans aren't effective in red teaming scenarios or real life scenarios because they, they can be picked up. They are very noisy. The next one that's important is service and version enumeration. And this is very important because getting the version or service version that the machines are running, for example, if a machine's running port 80, which is HTTP, we know it's running a web server, running service version will allow us to see what version that server is on. For example, a vulnerable version of Apache or Nginx. The next is script scanning. And this is also extremely important because script scanning allows us to pick off those easy wins. When we say easy wins, hackers mean an easy point of foothold or escalation onto a device. Sometimes when a machine is running Eternal Blue or there is a common path traversal vulnerability in an Apache server, Nmap will pick that up and it'll report on it through this SC argument. So with OS detection, if we provide the dash O flag, we're gonna enable OS detection. That means that we'll be able to figure out whether the machine is a Windows server, Windows client, or a Linux machine. The next step is output. This will allow us to save, scan data on a file or a greppable format. As you can see here, it's a dash on, dash ox, os, or og, or if we wish to extract it in all three major formats, we can do the dash zero or dash oa argument. We can also increase verbosity to see more data. We can do the dash v or tac v flag to be able to gather more data on this scan. We can also do dash vv for even more data. So this will take a greater effect on the device. We can also run scans such as A, which are aggressive. Once again, very noisy scans. Do not run this in red teaming scenarios. And we can also run dash six to enable IPv6 scanning. So it's extremely crucial to go over examples of how to use Nmap. And down here we can see that. We can see Nmap dash V. We're seeing it's going into verbose mode. It's going into an aggressive scan, so it's going to scan for multiple things. And we can see the fully qualified domain given into the argument later. We can also see Nmap dash V. We know that it's going to do a SN scan or a SYN scan on this IP for this subnet mask and also this other IP with this subnet mask. So that's something to keep in mind about the examples and how to actually use Nmap. So now that we understand the basic syntax of Nmap, we actually want to launch a scan. There's two common scans that I run on most penetration testing scenarios or CTF environments, right? So we want to check those out. The first scan that I do is called sudo Nmap, and I want to do a simple port scan. So I do dash p dash, and I want to scan all ports from 1 to 65,553. I also give it the prefix of open as an argument, so dash dash open. This will only give me response back if the ports are open. So it'll only give me data on open ports. The next one is a syn scan. Then I also want to do a very verbose scan. And then I'm gonna specify the min rate. I didn't talk about this too much in the overview of the syntax, but here I wanna talk a little bit more about it. This basically allows us to send 5,000 packets per second. That's all it does, we're just speeding it up a little bit. Next is we're going to export this in a greppable format, and we're gonna do a port scan on this IP. And this IP is just a TryHackMe box that's vulnerable that I've stood up in TryHackMe and I've connected over a VPN and now scanning. So let's go ahead and see the contents of the scan. So here we can see almost instantly we discovered port 22, We've also discovered port 80. So that's that port scan initially kicking in. We found two ports. Now we're gonna see what's open. And almost instantly again, we get two response backs. So let me full screen that again. We get port 22 and port 80 being open, one being SSH, the other one being an HTTP web server. But this isn't enough information. We wanna know a little bit more about this. And another thing I want to show you guys is before we even run OS scan, you can also do this with the ping tool. It's a little trick that I use. Based off of the time to live, you can kind of decipher what operating system this is running on. The default time to live of a Linux machine is 61, 64, sorry, and the default time to live of a Windows machine is 128. So dependent on the firewall, 
If you're closer to the 64 mark, you're probably looking at a Linux machine. And if you're closer to the 128 mark in time to live, you're probably looking at a Windows machine. So that's something that usually can indicate what type of operating system you're dealing with. In this case, I'm almost certain that the operating system that I am dealing with is a Linux machine. Now that we have this, we did save it in port scan. So if we run the cat command, which means concatenate or view the text within a file, we can actually see that it tells us that the, ho the host is available and those two ports are open. Okay, so the next scan is going to be nmap-scv. And usually, uh, I do want to brief this for you guys. You can see this command separated sometimes as sv and sc. But a neat trick with nmap is you can pair these two commands together and do scv for simple script scanning and version scanning. Then obviously, like I said previously, we did that port scan, we found out port 22 was open and port 80 was open. Now we want to specify that we want to know more about these ports. We want to do simple script scanning and we want to uh, look at the versions for this. We also want to run an operating system scan on this machine, just for extra details. Then we specify the IP of the victim or host. We can also do very verbose. I just like running very verbose just to have as much details as possible. And once again, we want to skip that host discovery. Then we want to just save it to service scan.txt. Let's run it. Oh, actually, we have to run this with sudo privileges because of the PN argument. So let's go ahead and run sudo. It's going to tell us it's initiating OS detection. It does see those two ports open. And here, if we scroll up a little bit, we're going to get some data back. So what do we see here? Port 22 is open. It's an open SSH 7.6 P1 server. That tells us a lot, right? We know the exact version OpenSSH is using on this machine. We also see that it's an Ubuntu Linux machine, so our time to live trick did kind of work because it had a time to live of 61 seconds, and we can see it, it indeed is a Linux machine. The next thing that we can take away from this is port open being open. Yeah, we, port 80 being open. We did know that. But in this case, now we know that web server is an Apache HTTPD server. And we know the version it runs 2.4.29. So if we want to attack it, if we want to take it over, we might do some exploit research and look up the service version to see if it's vulnerable to any RCE attacks or any attacks that can gain us a foothold on that device. So sadly, this is the conclusion of this class. But we were able to gather data on that host, and now we understand how to use Nmap. Sadly, we weren't able to continue and find vulnerabilities for that Apache or that OpenSSH server. We'll definitely learn more, and I want to thank you guys for joining this class, and I hope you took something away from it. <laughs>